Hey there, Dengas Stu here. Today's video is about repairing the hull of the steel trawl and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. There's quite a bit of work I need to do on the hull of the trawler before it gets sandblasted next week. So that's coming up really soon, so I've sort of just been powering away at that. By far the bulk of the work was actually repairing the rubbing strip along the chine. It took quite a lot to cut that off and quite a bit to weld the new one on. So we'll pick up this video where I'm just starting to repair some of the damage that was below the old one, getting ready to tack the new one on. Unfortunately it's raining a little bit today, but between showers I'm going to get out and start trying to weld up the cuts in the hull that occurred when taking the rubbing strip off, the old rubbing strip off. The one I'm going to start with is by far the worst one, so I think it's a good place. So here you can see I cut in at a wrong angle and ended up taking an actual sort of chunk out. It's actually not a cut, it's almost like a V section out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to TIG weld it and I'm just going to use the filler rod to start building up below until we meet at the top here. Step one, I'm going to clean it up with one of these knotted wire wheels. Uh, I'm not using the cup one for this because I sort of want to get in at this angle, so I've changed to this sort of thin style one. Alright, that did a pretty good job. Cleaned up to quite bright steel again. So I think I'll start about here. We'll just work all the way along. I've got one of these magnetic earths but the bolt size on the earth here is bigger than the lug on the end of the earth cable. What I'll do then is I'll clean up a section of the hull just off to the side, I'll put the magnet on and then I'll just put the alligator clip of the earth onto the magnet. Weld's getting pretty ugly because it's contaminated by internal paint, obviously. Should have thought of that. So I'm going to duck inside and grind that off as well. So started here, I think it was a little bit cold because this is actually relatively thick metal still. Got to here, possibly a bit hot because we were getting to that sharp edge. Uh, then we started getting the paint contamination from the inside and then things started going pretty smoothly again by the time I'd ground everything off. So anyway, now I'm just going to keep building this top edge here and then when that's all done we'll go and do the same thing on the inside so it's sort of double welded and be quite thick again. Then after that, just so you know, a plate is going to be welded over the top of this as well. Rain holds play unfortunately. Oh, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a jumper too. It's stinking hot today. It's raining but it's hot. TIG welding doesn't give you a lot of splatter, but you can get quite sunburnt from it. It gives off a lot of UV and there's no smoke like there is with a flux stick welder to block that UV. So you cop it pretty badly. So really it's just stopping myself from getting sunburnt essentially. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I'm TIG welding this, I really like TIG for filling things. The fact that you can heat something and add filler metal independent of you know, the heating process, whereas MIG and stick, you're kind of burning the filler metal at a fixed rate. So I think TIG's a really good welding process for this type of job. Uh, as Ned Kelly said, such is life. All right, stop raining for a moment, so let's get back into it. Oof, I can't see out these glasses. While I'm at it, even just cuts that are sort of cut in but not all the way through, I'm just going to fill those as well. Alright, what I've got to do now is grind all that welding back because a flat bar is now being welded onto the chine across the whole thing. So as well as having that welded up, I'll weld it on the inside too. It actually looks quite nice on the inside. I'll, I'll show you that. So this is the inside and I just need to get in here, grind that back, get in with a wire brush and then we'll run more weld along the inside which will seal it again. Then we're going to do the strip on the outside. So by the time that strip's on, it'll be welded bottom of the strip, top of the strip, under the strip and on the inside of the hull. I think it'd be pretty watertight. But in order to get that strip on, I actually need to grind this pretty much flat so that the metal can sit flush against the hull. So the process is going to be, if the weld down the bottom here seems to be where it's thickest, I was a bit careful when I was cutting up. I, you know, I could have cut closer to the hull, but I was a bit tentative with it. So I've got a little bit of grinding to do here. So I'm going to use a grinding disc to get this off. 
then I'm going to use a flap disc to sort of clean it up if it's not too bad then I'm going to use the wire wheel to clean the rust off then anywhere there's like little nicks like this or whatever and little cuts that have gone a bit too deep I'm going to fill that with TIG and we're just going to work all the way along until it's ready to put the new rubbing strip on I can't really clean it up and prime it properly because it'll just get burnt off and theoretically when it's all welded water shouldn't get in there but what I'm going to do is put a coat of this weld through primer on just to protect it until we weld the new strip on then that'll get sandblasted and primed properly It's also a great way just to mark where you've done so now I know where I'm pushing on from so I'm basically going to repeat that process all around the whole boat. I've been using this gouging tip to get the rest of the transducer box off. It's been doing a good job. It gets it close enough that I can grind the rest, you know. Better than having all this big chunk. So I've still got to do the back here, a little bit tricky to get to, but we'll get there. What I've also been doing is putting the wire wheel onto here first to get cleaner metal for the heat to conduct into. So big thank you to those uh, viewers who mentioned gouging tips. I never knew they existed and I've got to say it's the perfect tool for this job. There was a section of the hull here that was quite thin. You could see where the hull comes along and it was quite, you know, it's quite a dip here. Hit with a wire brush, tried to use the TIG welder but the uh, 15 amp thing's still tripping. So hit it with a stick and blew a hole through it, you know, no big deal. What I'm going to try doing instead is cutting a hole in the hole here with a hole saw then cutting a patch of metal with a hole saw that's one size bigger hold it up there with the magnets and then see if we can weld it round. What I might do is get a flap disc and just grind down the weld I did do so that it doesn't throw the hole saw off. Oh and in case you're wondering, yes I have looked inside um, there's a rib about here, so I think we'll be right. We're just beside it. All right, plenty of good metal all the way around the outside of this hole, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go up one size in the hole saw and cut a fresh bit of metal out. You know, I've just had a genius idea, and no, it's not tapping on the beam, but that is a good idea. What I'm thinking is, I'll put the calipers around the outside of this hole saw and I'm actually thinking I'll take a bit of 4mm steel and get them just to laser cut a whole lot of circles this size. That way, whenever I find a dodgy bit, I can cut it out with this, go to this little stack of discs and just weld it in. I mean, why not have them as a whole set of patches that I can use in the future? I'm either going to be cutting a big square out, replacing a whole plate, or, if it's a dodgy little bit, why not just pick a standard size hole saw and go, nah, this is what I always use. Have a few of these so that they, you know, you've got the sharp one. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think it's one of the nice things about steel boats is you can just have a set of patches like that. You couldn't do that sort of thing with wood. So, I think that's, yeah, that's the plan. Now, because not everyone's going to have that option, what you can do is, as I was saying before, use the slightly larger hole saw, cut a patch out, then you can lay that patch on a piece of copper and you can just sort of pad weld inside the hole cut by the centre drill bit and it won't stick to the copper. So you can then do this, pull it away, then you've got the disc you need. But I'm going to try another option and get a whole lot made. It's now started raining again. Mark comes to visit, so we're going to drink beer instead. We are. It's a fine plan. Next day, a mate of mine, Jeff, who helped me get the rudder post out, came up to help me tackle the the new flat bar onto the chines. So we got it all sort of, you know, pinned up and ready for another guy to come and weld out in a few days' time. But it was quite sort of fiddly. Just it was really good to have a couple of people just to hold the long legs while I tacked them and got them in position. Then it went pretty smoothly. A few spots on the chine where the metal's worn away. It looks like you can sort of see a crack where the side plate joins the bottom plate. Where I can see that even, you know, vaguely, I'm grinding it out and then I'm just using the TIG to build it up with filler rod like this. So I'm going to do that here and 
then again here. Then we're welding the plates over, which will also get welded to the bottom plate, so it should be nice and solid afterwards. My work on the boat, and you can lie on the wharf and just watch the crabs doing their thing. Oh well, time to go grinding again. When Mick arrived, he got straight into welding out all the flat bar using his three-phase MIG welder. My job really was just to sit on deck and keep an eye out for any uh, fires that might start inside the boat and have a fire extinguisher ready in case they do. But all went smoothly and they were all welded out now. Today I'm just finishing the top side of this rubbing strip, which is the one side that Mick couldn't get done. And I did a bit of a root pass with a 2.5mm rod yesterday. Today I'm going across again with a 3.2mm rod running at a higher amperage just to sort of fill it in between the doubler and the rubbing strip. This site has been particularly contaminated because of, you know, salt, rust, but particularly because of diesel that was trapped behind this doubler that had come through the hole in the side of the hull and then filled in behind the doubler. That's great for uh, corrosion protection, but not so good for welding. Often you'll get like a bit of hot diesel and it'll almost, as it expands, it'll heat up and it'll jet out through the puddle. Makes it a little bit tricky, but we'll get there. It's a little bit slow. This is as far as I'm getting with each rod, but it's kind of relaxing. All right, finished the second pass all the way along the boat now. Now what I'm going to do is put the flap disc over it and the wire wheel over it, inspect it, and touch up where I need to with the 2.5 millimeter rod. Then we're going to start doing some keel repairs. All right, these are the sections of the keel I need to fix. This is quite thin here. You can see what looks like a bit of a grain through this. So this looks like it's been caused by electrolysis. Obviously where a anode strap used to be. So I don't know why specifically where the strap is because the strap was stainless or some dissimilar metal. I don't know or whether it's just directly below the motor. So it's a straight current issue. So what I'm gonna do, figure out how much I'm gonna cut out and we'll make a plate and we'll just replace that bit entirely. All right, I think I'm going to cut this whole section out. Which is 600 mil long. And I'm going to cut it out to the exact height of the bit of plate I've got to go in. So let's cut the plate, then we'll mark here. This plate is the same thickness as the keel, which is 12 millimetres. Okay, yellow line's what I'm cutting out. What I'm gonna do now is grab a 13 mil drill bit and just drill just inside these corners. So we're gonna have slightly rounded corners and then I'm gonna cut the rest with the grinder. I would have considered pad welding it, but it's bad both sides, quite large area on this side. Took a little while to cut out, particularly given the acetylene had run out, so I had to do with grinder, but we got there. That's one side welded out now. 
certainly a bit of a test of my stick welding skills lying on your side under here but uh, it's not going anywhere that's for sure all right so now I'm gonna go around and we'll do the exact same thing a full weld round on the other side okay port side welded out now haven't had a chance to brush it yet this one I now need to do what I'm gonna do is just mark the other one like I did I'm not going to cut it till tomorrow now it's getting a little bit too late to get the grinder out so I'll take this home as I did with the other one just bevel it slightly round it so it's ready for tomorrow once this is patched up same process as the other one so I won't show too much of that but then when there are divots like this and even smaller I'm going to go through and just start pad welding every shallow section or every depression I can see so that as much of the hull is welded before the sandblaster comes that way there's less chance of blowing a hole through the hole and also means I can get paint on sooner rather than having to hold off and do some welding before I paint after the sandblast. I may actually replace this whole section too. Sandblast is not coming to Wednesday, it's now Thursday so I've got, got time on my side. So I actually I might cut this level with the stern tube, cut at the top then just copy it and weld a whole new bit in. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's quite pitted on this side, and then pitted on this side too, and you can just feel with your hand that it's definitely, definitely getting quite thin, so I think I'll swap that bit out as well. Unfortunately, my camera's died, so what I've been doing is put the two patches in the keel now, also pad welded a section that was shallow, you know, depression. I'll do this depression here. And now I've just oxy cut this skeg off here. The hull itself still supported by the stands here, so I don't think it's going to sag. And I'll knock this out, use it as a template, make a new one, put that in. Because although it wasn't all the way through, it was pretty bad. Why not just put a new bit of steel in? All right, completely knocked out now. Obviously, I'll have to uh, grind this back possibly leave a little bit of a stub to weld to. Uh, have a think about that. But let's make the replacement one now. I can't see any reason it was made this exact shape. Looks like there was a bit of a rectangle here. Then there's a weld along here. New bit was added on. I'm simply gonna keep this bottom angle, this top angle, and join these with straight lines. All right, this is my new one. It's pretty thick metal, so I think I might try and oxy cut it and then I can just smooth it up with the grinder. I decided to go the oxy torch to cut it in the end because it is 12mm thick, and I've got to say, I'm glad I did. It was so, so, so much faster than doing that with a grinder and quieter, which is actually the reason I use the oxy torch as much as I can. A for practice, B to keep the noise down. Anyway, now what I'll do is just clean it up slightly and bevel it all so that we can get a good solid weld on this. I wasn't so worried about the keel patches because there's not that much strain on them, but I feel there might be some strain on this, so I'm going to do a full bevel on this one before welding. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to weld the new skeg on, so I'll be doing that Monday morning, but I did bring it home, bevel the edges I'm going to weld, and then just start cleaning up the fore and aft edges of it as well, so that shouldn't take really half an hour or something to weld that in. The downside to my plan about getting all those discs laser cut so I could drill out sections of the hull and replace it is that they haven't arrived yet. I ordered them a while ago, they were supposed to only be a few days and express posted, so I don't know what's going on there. I'll give them a call on Monday and hopefully I can rush down and grab them rather than getting them shipped out, save a bit of time. It's annoying to be on the road for a couple of hours, but if it means I get them in time to weld them in before the sandblaster comes, that's a bit of a win. Once they're in, my final priority is just looking at all the pitting on the hull and doing as much pad welding as I can before the sandblasting happens. I'll have a chance to do a little bit more afterwards, but the more I can do before the sandblasting, the more I can just get straight into priming. So sorry there was a little bit of footage missing from the camera dying, but I think you kind of get the general idea of, you know, pad weld, patch, cut, whatever. It's a bit repetitive to be honest, but well worth doing. Next week, hopefully, as I said, the sandblast will be coming, so that'll be a real milestone. We'll be sandblasting, and then very soon after that, getting the first coat of primer on. So take care, and I'll catch you then. See ya.